What is going on guys? So we are doing adjustable control arms on the Jeep. I'm gonna do uppers and lowers front and back. It's gonna give me the ability to dial in my pinion angles, um, work with the caster and the pinion angle in the front. But in this video, we're gonna do the back. If you're interested in seeing the front, I will do a second video on that. So I did a three inch lift on the Wrangler. Now, a lot of guys say you can run the stock control arms when you do this. Once again, I had some bad bushings anyway. So uh, with these control arms, I'm gonna be able to get a little wheelbase back as well as get my pinion angles correct. So let's get into it. So I'm not gonna be going through the process of installing the control arms. Uh, there's a ton of videos on that, but I couldn't really find much on how to set them up. You know, how to make sure your axle square, your pinion angles, what to set them at, all those type of things. So that's what we're gonna focus on in these videos. So here we've got the new adjustable control arms on the rear. So I'm gonna start, since I have a three inch lift on this, I'm gonna go ahead and start with making this about a quarter inch longer than the factory one, just to give me a starting spot. Easiest way to do that, I'm gonna take my new arm, put it right on top of my old, use the factory bolt, it'll fall down in the eyelet hole, and then I just need to adjust this out to where the bolts line up. Once I've got that, I know my length is the same. Now I'm gonna make this a quarter inch longer. Once I've got my first one set to a quarter inch longer than factory, I'm gonna use the same trick for both of them. Make sure they're the same length. Just like I did on the lower control arms, first I'm gonna take the upper, use my bolts to set it the same length, and I'm gonna make it a quarter inch longer then I will match this one to the other upper that's already a quarter inch longer. What that's going to do is that pushes that axle back but should keep my pinion angle and everything about the same. Gives me a starting point for getting everything set up. Okay now what I've done taking the springs off, track bars loosened on what taken off completely on the passenger side, the shocks are taken off the bottom and I've compress the axle all the way to the bump stops. So if we look in here, you can see the bump stops are hitting. Now what I wanna make sure is that that bump stop is hitting directly in the middle of the pad on that axle. Which this side looks like it's pretty good. We come around to the passenger side. It could use a little adjustment, that axle could come forward just a little bit. So now I've got the rear end set back on jack stands so the weight is on it. To bring this act, the side of the axle a little bit forward, what we need to do is shorten this lower control arm on this side just a little bit. So I took the lower control arm off, gave it one turn, tried it again, it was a little too much, so I took it back off, did a half turn. Now if we look at that bump stop, it's pretty much centered right on that axle. The left to right doesn't matter because that's what our track bar is gonna do. So all I'm looking at is front and back centered on the axle, and that looks good. Okay, got our springs put back in, our shocks hooked back up, our sway bar hooked up. Now we can move on to the pinion angle. Okay, we've got the lower arm set. We've got the shocks, the springs, everything all put back together, track bars back in. It's setting on the ground, so this is ride height. This is where most people get confused. So, I pulled the drive shaft off the transfer case. Now, if you've got a uh, double cardigan, or double cardigan, 
Now, if you've got a double carden uh, shaft up here, which basically means you have two U-joints on this end, then you don't really need to do this part. Uh, you only need to set the rear pinion angle. But since on this one, we only have a U-joint in the front and a single U-joint in the back, we need to make sure that the angle coming out of the transfer case matches the pinion angle. That way the vibrations will cancel each other out. So what I've done is just once again, remove this drive shaft. There's four bolts to hold it on. Make sure to mark it so you put it back on the exact same way. But then what we're gonna do is take our angle finder and go right onto the flange coming out of the transfer case and look at our angle. It looks like we're about eight degrees. So since we know our transfer case angle is eight degrees, then I would like my pinion angle to be close to that. So let's go ahead and check it. Now to check the pinion angle, um, you can either space across two of the bolts for the cover, or you can use this little flat area right here. So looks like we've got about a 10 and a half degree angle. So two and a half degrees, honestly, it's not too bad. But since I've got these adjustable control arms, I'm gonna try to get it, uh, maybe change the pinion angle a degree or two to get it a little closer. I'd like to see it within about one degree. So we know we need to drop the front end that pinion down. So what I've done, used a floor jack, little pressure on the front of it until my bolts and my upper control arms are loose. And then I came in and took the bolts on the axle side out. Now I can use this jack to set my pinion angle to where I want it. Once I get that set, I adjust the control arms so that the bolts will go in. So I was taking my readings off the back of the pumpkin but I was wasn't really getting a good reading I wasn't happy with it it was kind of varying between the bolts in that flat spot so I just went ahead and took the drive shaft out got my yoke facing straight up and down measured the angle that way now I've got it pretty much dialed in where I've got eight degrees and eight degrees so that should alleviate any kind of vibrations in this thing. So now I've just got to set these control arms to the correct length where my bolt fits on both sides and start putting this thing back together. So that is the process. We've got this all put back together. Went to it on a test drive, don't have any vibrations, anything like that. The one thing I didn't really talk about that you definitely should do is to make sure that that axle is square to the frame. So basically what I did is I just picked a point on this side and measured forward to a set point that I could do from both sides. So from the actual tube forward to a common location on either side to make sure that axle is not tweaked one way or the other. Another thing with pushing that axle back that you need to watch out for is your track bar and everything in the back and your fuel tank. You need to cycle that suspension all the way up and all the way down uh, with everything connected and set up like you want it to make sure you're not gonna hit onto that gas tank. Hopefully that video was helpful. Uh, once again, I'm gonna do another video for the front. So I'll throw that right up top here. And uh, if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comment. And I'll see you guys next time.